If you have ever watched the little corn begin to march across the black lands and then slowly change to big corn and go marching on from the little corn moon of summer to the big corn harvest moon of autumn, then you must have guessed who it is that helps the corn come along. It is the corn fairies. Leave out the corn fairies and there wouldn't be any corn. All children know this. All boys and girls know that corn is no good unless there are corn fairies. And I, the observant lady of the farming community, Jane, see this with my own eyes. Have you ever stood in Illinois or Iowa and watched the late summer wind or the early fall wind running across a big cornfield? It looks as if a big long blanket were being spread out for dancers to come and dance on. If you look close, and if you listen close, you can see the corn fairies come dancing and singing, but sometimes. If it is a wild day, and a hot sun is pouring down while a cool north wind blows, and this happens sometimes, then you will be sure to see thousands of corn fairies marching and counter-marching in mocking grand marches over the big, long blanket of green and silver. Then, too, they sing. Only you must listen with your littlest and newest ears if you wish to hear their singing. They sing soft songs that go, Pla, sizzy, pla, sizzy, sizzy. And each song is softer than an eye wink, softer than a Nebraska baby's thumb. And Spink, who is a little girl living in the same house with the man writing this story, and Skabooch, who is another little girl in the same house. Both Spink and Skabooch are now asking the question, how can we tell corn fairies if we see them? If we meet a corn fairy, how will we know it? And this is the explanation the man gave to Spink, who is older than Skabooch, and to Skabooch, who is younger than Spink. All corn fairies wear overalls. They work hard, the corn fairies, and they are proud. The reason they are proud is because they work so hard. And the reason they work so hard is because they have overalls. But understand this, the overalls are corn gold cloth woven from leaves of ripe corn mixed with ripe October corn silk. In the first week of the harvest moon coming up, red and changing to yellow and silver, the corn fairies sit by the thousands between the corn rows, weaving and stitching the clothes they have to wear next winter, next spring, next summer. They sit cross-legged when they sew, and it is a law among them, each one must point the big toe at the moon while sewing the harvest moon clothes. When the moon comes up red as blood early in the evening, they point their big toes slanting toward the east, then towards midnight, when the moon is yellow and halfway up the sky, their big toes are only half slanted as they sit cross-legged sewing. And after midnight, when the moon sails its silver disc high overhead and toward the west, then the corn fairies sit sewing with their big toes pointed nearly straight up. If it is a cool night and looks like frost, then the laughter of the corn fairies is something worth seeing. All the time they sit sewing their next year clothes, they're laughing. It is not a law they have to laugh. They laugh because they are half tickled and glad because it is a good corn year. And whenever the corn fairies laugh, then the laugh comes out of the mouth like a thin gold frost. If you should be lucky enough to see a thousand corn fairies sitting between the corn rows and all of them laughing, you would laugh with wonder yourself to see the gold frost coming from their mouths while they laughed. Travelers who have traveled far and seen many things say that if you know the corn fairies with a real knowledge, you can always tell by the stitches in their clothes what state they are from. In Illinois, the corn fairies stitch 15 stitches of ripe corn silk across the woven corn leaf cloth. In Iowa, they stitch 16 stitches, in Nebraska 17, and the farther west you go, the more corn silk stitches the corn fairies have in the corn cloth clothes they wear. 